Hello and welcome back to the channel. We're going to take a look at Lord Herbert of the South Downs, who was one of the contributors in the debate about Lord Blencathra's Amendment 97ZA in the uh, Keep Prison Single Sex uh, campaign group. So um, we're going to take a little look at his intervention. It's only a very short one. And then we're going to find out a little bit more about him. My Lords, um, I, I draw attention to um, my interests uh, as declared in the Register. I do find myself to be somewhat perplexed by this debate and the uh, amendment. Um, my noble friend Baroness Mayer said we are only talking uh, about men who did not transition. But I don't think the amendment does say that. I think the amendment uh, is, is clear. Uh, in that it says where a person who has undergone gender uh, reassignment. So there appears to be uh, some misunderstanding about what the effect of the amendment uh, would be. And I wonder what the problem is that we are trying to fix. After all, my noble friend Lord Brencathra himself said that the number of transgender women in, women only, in the women-only estate is, and I quote, very small. We know that, in practice, the vast majority of transgender prisoners are already held in prisons which match their sex registered at birth. And the small number who are not held in such places have been risk assessed. But as the noble Lord Lord Panic pointed out, that risk assessment would count for nothing uh, in relation to transgender women, because the effect of this amendment would be to say that there are no circumstances, no circumstances, irrespective of risk, in which such women, who may have been women for some time, may be held in the women-only estate. It doesn't matter that the authorities believe that they pose no risk whatsoever. It doesn't matter that the numbers that we're talking about are actually very low. What matters? to the movers of this amendment is uh, that uh, the law should say that they should never be held in uh, such a wing. And my lords, I think that that is in principle wrong. It seems to me to be the sense of the whole house that people should be held uh, according to the appropriate accommodation after a risk assessment. And that might well mean that trans women are not held in the women-only estate. It might well mean that trans men are not held in the male-only estate, but that it would be better, it is better, that there is a risk assessment and they are held in the appropriate place. But the effect of this amendment is to prescribe, because the movers of this amendment think that they know better. And that, in the end, is the decision that I think we are confronted with. It's a decision about whether we are to be guided by ideology, or whether we are to be guided by uh, pragmatism and, I would suggest, compassion as well. It was said in advancing uh, this amendment that a reason to accept it is that, absent this amendment being passed, no places could be safe for women, not just in prison, but beyond the prison estate. How can that be? How can it be the effect of this amendment, were we to pass it, that suddenly it would make all other places uh, for women uh, safe. safe. It, it, it was also said that uh, there... Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, yeah. I'll give way to the noble lady. I'm so sorry. Which was, I only wanted to clarify, which was in the, if it has an impact on prisons, what it would ha impact it might have for all women. I think what's at issue is the protection of single sex uh, facilities, single sex places that are single sex only. And that is a very important principle, no matter how small the numbers are in this instance, that there is concern about. So I'm at least clarifying why it is that people say it. And uh, it's not just people in this house um, who say it. This is a widespread concern. That's, sorry, sorry. So I'm just... I, I, I'm, I'm grateful to the noble lady. I think we can agree that it's important that uh, women should be safe. And the Equality Act 
allows for, provides exemptions in a number of scenarios, including in relation to women-only spaces outside the prison estate, uh, to ensure that it allows the prison authorities to make the right judgments about where it is appropriate to place people. The safety of people is put first, and so it should be. My Lords, may I just say this in conclusion? It's been suggested that a reason to pass this amendment is because of the media coverage that uh, this uh, debate has excited, that outside of this place there is uh, um, a tremendous wave of anger and that we need to pay attention to it. Of course, if people's fears are, uh, are, are provoked, if there are uh, media campaigns that suggest that women cannot be safe, then there will be such uh, fervent uh, a a outrage. But that is not a reason for us to depart from the facts. And the facts do not lend support to this approach, which places ideology above pragmatism. And I would therefore urge the government not to accept this amendment. OK, Lord Herbert. So he claims that it's unreasonable to exclude all males from the single sex spaces that are set aside for women. On the other hand, he believes that women have a right to feel safe, including by provision of single sex services. These, these ideas do not fit together. So he also believes the danger that women are in when uh, men are allowed access to our spaces is, is, is overstated or we are scaremongering when we talk about that. So those, those three things are like 180 degree turns each time. I can't make that make sense. I'm happy to say that Lord Herbert does have some other views that I agree with. Uh, he recognises the issues surrounding the assisted dying debate and is not in favour of euthanising our old, sick or disabled citizens. And I'm very glad that he recognises that voluntary euthanasia is crossing a Rubicon, um, which we do not want to do. So thank you for that, Lord Herbert. I am on board with that. He's, he's listed in, in the Register of Interests um, that... He has various roles which may be of significance in our um, campaign aims. He is a paid up member of the LGBT lobby. He is the Prime Minister's special envoy on LGBT rights. What does that involve? No idea. <laughs> no, absolutely none. Um, he's also chair of the UK government's International LGBT Conference. It's going to be headlined safe to be me or something like that. And it's being pushed by a certain uh, kind of faction of kind of very um, individualist, libertarian uh, members of the Conservative Party who are on board with the LGBT rights lobby. For his spoken contributions that you can look up on Hansard uh, if you want to go to the description box. I always put all my links in there so that you can check what I'm saying is, is what I've actually found. Uh, he contributes to a debate regarding the global LGBT rights in 2020. He refers to the LGBT action plan that Ben Hunt was so enamoured of. He discusses LGBT homelessness. He discusses uh, possibilities of Gender Recognition Act 2004 reform. All of those debates happened under the premiership of Theresa May, who was using LGBT rights as a wedge issue to, to try and shore up support as a, a very liberal uh, kind of modern uh, conservative premier. So um, it's very interesting that there is still a faction who are advisors to the prime minister who are, are, are in favour of this lobby. So if you wish to write to Lord Herbert, you'll find his details listed in the description box. Um, he is a paid up member of the LGBT lobby. Is it worth spending half an hour writing to him? It's completely up to you. Uh, yeah, make your choice. Write to him if you wish. If you want to, um, there's a, a video that I've done about writing to your lords and obviously there is information about how to address the lords and um, all of that information. So just check out the description box. So thanks for joining me for that little look at Lord Herbert of the South Downs. Um, 
We are almost at the end of the Prisons series. We have two more, I think, to go, uh, which I'm working on. Um, if you would like to subscribe to the channel, that would make me feel very pleased. Uh, share the love. Please do share this video with a friend that you think might be interested in it. Um, if you'd like to tip me for the work, there is a PayPal link in the description box and I very much appreciate your support. So thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again very soon.